In this lesson, we'll learn how to create and store custom brushes here inside of Mari. All right, fantastic. So go ahead and open up the Lesson 6 Begin Archive from your Mari Files folder within your project files, and you'll find this amazingly detailed asset. It's something I made myself. It's, uh, well, no, really, really, it's just a plane. But um, the purpose of this plane is to basically serve as sort of a test environment for making brushes. This is something that usually lives within my own uh, projects inside of Mari, and uh, I like to use it just because it's a nice, simple surface to paint on. So um, it's very, very light. Obviously, it's just a plane. And what we can do is we can come in here, and once we've determined the front side using the masking uh, preview, again, uh, by hitting comma, you can see I have my back face masking turned on. There's the back. There's the front. I can come in here, and I can kind of focus that in on my canvas. I can come in here in the navigation toolbar, and I can lock so I can't pan. I can't zoom. I can't roll, and I can't orbit. So pretty much that plane is locked right there. And it's essentially a 2D canvas for us to paint on and maybe come in and make some brushes. So um, let's go ahead and talk about it because, you know, I come from Photoshop like I'm sure many of you do in terms of your sort of your roots for your texturing. And Photoshop's got a very robust brush engine, but Mari has a very, very robust brush engine as well. Uh, and it's all right over here in the brush editor palette. So um, let's go ahead and start off on the properties uh, tab here. And you'll notice here that there are a lot of settings that if you come from Photoshop, you're probably familiar with. Things like noise, spacing, uh, things like that. Noise, simply adding noise to the brush tip down here. Uh, spacing, simply adjusting the spacing between the stamps of that brush tip. So essentially your brush tip is just an alpha. Uh, very similar to the way Photoshop treats a brush. We have things like opacity. We even have similar terminology in terms of jitter, uh, varying the, uh, randomizing the opacity or the, the rotation, the flow, things of that nature. So a lot of these settings, if you're coming from Photoshop, should, you should understand or at least have a basic grasp over them. So let's talk a little bit instead of running through all these settings, which I'm sure that um, that you know is a lesson all of its own. But um, that's really not a way for you to be successful here inside of Mari, or really kind of take your Mari knowledge and push it to the next level. What I want you to know is how to effectively create brushes. And I'm not going to sit here and create a bunch of brushes with you, because obviously you're going to need a brush based on your own scenario. Um, what I want to show you is how you can just paint the alpha for that brush and quickly create a brush using it. So um, let's go ahead and get started here. Now, um, the first thing I'm going to do, let's just go ahead and hit the K key and bring up our shelf pop up. And I'll just go ahead and start off with, um, let's go ahead and start off with a hard surface brush. What's this guy look like? Uh, nah, let's go with this one. This crack splat looks pretty good. Obviously, very, very large alpha was used to create this brush. So let me hold R and drop that down. And I'm going to simply just come in and start to paint a little bit. And obviously, that's very opaque. Let me clear my buffer and fix that by adjusting the flow and the alpha based on the pressure of my tablet, or the stylus on my tablet, rather. And I'm also going to come in here and I'm going to jitter the radius as well as the rotation. So I can get a little bit more randomness out of that. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit more. Again, holding down the R key. Uh, okay, so we're just going to come in here and kind of paint a pattern, sort of like that. I'm going to grab my eraser, hit the K key, and let's go ahead and switch over to maybe organic brushes. Let's find something we can knock some holes in this texture we just painted with. Something interesting looking. Uh, let's go. I like this storm cloud brush. I actually use that quite a bit. So uh, I'm going to come in here and just kind of vary the pressure of my tab on my tablet. I'm going to turn off the radius control, so I can come in here and just kind of knock away at that edge some. Obviously, you know the brush that you you create uh, is probably going to be relevant to really to uh, whatever you're trying to paint. But um, let me come in with my brush while I'm working with that storm cloud and I'm just going to go ahead and set the brush over to that too and we can come in and 
kind of paint in and erase away with that same storm cloud brush. All right, fantastic. So um, that should work right now. Now, if we wanted to add some additional um, detail to that, whatever, I mean, your brush tip may not look anything like this, and it really doesn't matter because we've just created essentially a custom alpha here uh, that we can utilize as a brush tip here inside of Mari. Now, the first thing I'm going to do once I'm kind of happy, I kind of like that triangular shape, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bake it down. So uh, before I do, let me hit the I key. And notice that I've got this paint layer in this file selected. Now, if we came over to our channels, open the layer stack here. Let me just drag this guy over. Fantastic. Um, basically, the base layer is filled with white. Paint is transparent, just so you know. Uh, I'll close that out, bake that down. So basically, the paint that I now have on the uh, on on this plane is on a transparent layer and that becomes pretty important so um, basically we need to create uh, a transparent PNG file and um, now that we have that baked down the quickest and easiest way to do that here is to simply export this layer so uh, let me come over here and I'm gonna select that layer we'll go ahead and right click on that and I'm gonna choose export selected layers right there all right, fantastic. So um, now in this dialog, we want to go ahead and browse to where we're going to save this. So let's go ahead and tap on this button here. And I'm going to go ahead and save this in my referenced files folder. Uh, let me go ahead and back up a couple referenced files. And I'm going to put it in, in a brushes subfolder within referenced files. So we'll just call this something real descriptive, brush01 maybe. That works for me. But I want to go ahead and tell mari.png. So it knows that we want to save a PNG file. Now we'll go ahead and hit save. And we're back to this window here. We want to make sure that small textures are enabled, but we also want to keep the alpha channel. So uh, let's go ahead and export all patches. I know that this particular plane only has one UV patch. So we now have created uh, a PNG file. As a matter of fact, let me just go ahead and double click on that here and we'll just open that up in Windows Photo Viewer and you can ex see exactly what that alpha looks like. Nothing fancy, just simple alpha, but um, that's the PNG file that we've created here. So I want to go ahead and close that out. Now, let's go ahead and fill this layer with transparency. Let's just come up to Patches, Fill, and we'll go with Transparent. There we go. So let's clear out our paint layer at this point. Now, um, now at this point, we've made our custom alpha, and we want to apply that to a brush here inside of Mari. Let's go over, and I like to just kind of start with one of these basic brushes, maybe this hard 100 here. So you can see, oh, I'm on my eraser. Let me hit the P key, switch back to my paint tool. And again, we're back on this hard 100. So that's kind of what the brush looks like. It's definitely not our brush, but if we come over to our Properties tab over in the Brush Editor, let's scroll all the way down here under General, and you can see here um, this portion right here, this is what we need to be concerned with. So uh, let's go ahead and choose Path, or choose the path rather, to the file that we just saved. Let me just come over here and browse to where I have that. Brushes, Brush01.png. So we'll go ahead and select that one. There we go. Hit open. Now, at this point, this is not our brush. This is still that hard round 100 brush. So this is really important. You need to remember if you want to use a custom alpha like this. Uh, we're going to switch this from render to bitmap. And there's our custom alpha. So um, what we've essentially done is taken one of the brush presets that come with Mari and we've changed the alpha that's being used for that. So all of the brush presets for that hard 100 brush up here that were configured, they're going to be applied to our new alpha. So when we paint with that, it's not going to look all that great. That's because we need to customize those settings. So uh, let me go ahead and clear the buffer, Control shift c And let's just come in here and maybe adjust the spacing on that some. Let's come down here and jitter the rotation, maybe jitter the radius. So we've got something like that. And now we've got a little bit more of a custom brush that uh, it, maybe it's starting to look more like what we had envisioned. Now, obviously, I don't have a project that I'm working on this brush with, but um, this is definitely 
a unique brush. This doesn't look like any of the presets that Mari ships with. So um, this particular brush is ours. We just made it. Now how do we keep it? How do we save this so that we can use it on this project and any other project that we want? Well, uh, we want to come over here to our shelves and let's just jump over to, uh, we'll go ahead and save it under project. Now the project shelf really only pertains to the project you're currently working on. In this case it's my plane, but we can export this shelf. So maybe we've come in and we've created 10 or 12 brushes and now we want to export that. Let me just go ahead first, let's save our brush. So I'm going to hit this little plus sign right here. We'll go ahead and tap on that. There's our brush, I'll just call that our brush. Alright, fantastic. So we've now saved our brush preset. We can come in here, we can change back to one of these hard 100 brushes, and at any time select our custom brush, and we're back to the exact same properties that we set for that custom alpha that we created. So that's how you can begin to create your own custom brushes here inside of Mari. Now at this point, if you wanted to save out this brush or multiple brushes, um, you could come over here and you could right click on a single brush and say uh, save shelf or even save item. Um, and you can see here if we choose to save shelf, that's going to prompt us to save this MSH file, Mari shelf file. Now if we were to right click on that and choose to save the item, it's going to save a .msi file, which is the I for item. So that's a single item. So uh, that's how you can save your brush alphas and your custom brush properties as um, your own brush here inside of Mari. And then you can take and save either that single or group of brushes out so that you can begin to use them in other Mari projects. So um, now ultimately, Mari does have a very powerful brush engine and I'd like to encourage you to experiment with that. But if you've got some brushes from Photoshop that you really love and you want to bring those alphas over into Mari, there's a way that you can do that very, very quickly and very easily. So uh, let's do this really quick. We'll come up to the view menu here. Actually, I'm sorry. We'll go to tools. It's right here. Uh, so under tools, you'll find this import brushes option. So we'll go ahead and click on that and if you look in your reference files folder in that brushes subfolder you'll find this Photoshop brushes.abr file. And, uh, we'll go ahead and select that here and simply hit open. Mari's going to run uh, a script that's going to take all of the alphas contained in that Photoshop.abr file and it's going to bring, bring them in and load them as a custom shelf here inside of Mari. So uh, now obviously these are just the alphas, any kind of dynamics that you had configured for the brushes on the Photoshop side, those are going to stay in Photoshop. But the important thing is, is you have all these custom alphas uh, from the Photoshop brushes that maybe you've used for years and maybe you still love. So um, now at this point we can come in and select one of these alphas and we can begin to configure it for use here inside of Mari. And then again, don't forget to save your own new brush so Mari remembers how you configure these properties.